Welcome to Global Matters with Solange Warner. The purpose of our show is to promote international trade, cultural and humanitarian exchange worldwide. Today, my guest is the Consul General of the United Kingdom, Annabel Malik. We will be right back. <music> to introduce you to the Consul General of the United Kingdom, Annabel Malis. Consul, welcome to our show. Thank you very much, Solange. Great to be here. Of course. Uh, please tell the viewers the benefits of having the Consulate of the United Kingdom here in Georgia. Specifically, talk about the benefits for our state's economy. Well, my responsibilities as Consul General here cover a six-state region um, from North Carolina through to Mississippi and it's all about making sure that the fantastic relationship the UK has with the United States continues to flourish into the future and with respect to the economy of course that's very much at the top of our priorities at the moment um, just like in the United States we're very focused on making sure that we um, achieve sustainable economic recovery so the trade and investment relationship between this part of the United States and the UK is a very important part of what I do. Excellent. What are the uh, states that your consulate covers? Uh, which territory? Mm -hmm. Well, it, for me, it's a giant patch. It's actually three times the size of the UK. It includes North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, and Tennessee, six states. So much. So yeah, that's a large territory. And I am very interested in asking you more about the initiatives that the consulate uh, is doing today. But I will have to ask you about something that the entire world is uh, very excited and anxious to know more about, the royal wedding. Can you please share with the viewers any details that the media has not been able to inform so far about the wedding? <laughs> well, I think what's very special to me is how much the royal wedding has excited interest here in the Southeast. And I think perhaps people don't realize how many connections there are between this part of the United States and the UK, and not just with the UK, but with the royal family and the royal couple. Um, and I can tell you a little bit about some of that. Yes, please. Uh -huh. I mean, there are many different events um, that will reflect those connections that are gonna be taking place um, as we approach the wedding on the 29th of April. But just here in Atlanta, there's a special relationship between Emory University and St. Andrews University, which of course is where Catherine Middleton and Prince William met. And yeah. so you have here among the population in Atlanta, um, students who have, um, have studied with the royal couple and who know um, at first hand some of the corridors they might have met in and uh, the places where they lived whilst they were at St. Andrews University. That's amazing. That's, that's really, you know, I think Americans uh, take the, the royal family and, and now the royal wedding as a little bit part of what our culture is all about. We are so excited to know uh, that uh, uh, William, Prince William is happy and he's getting married. Tell us a little bit more about the family, Kate Middleton. We don't know much about her, of course, just through, through the royal family. Can you tell us more about her family and how did this relationship became what it is today, uh, a fiance and getting ready to get married? Well, the, at, at the heart of it, they're a very modern couple. They're two people that met, um, became friends and fell in love. It's caught media attention that Catherine Middleton is what's called a commoner. She, she doesn't come um, from any branch of the royal family. And that is quite unusual um, for royal marriages. Um, but it's very clear, seeing the young couple, um, how close they are to each other. And um, just in the last few weeks, they've been touring around the United Kingdom, getting to meet some of the population in Northern Ireland, in Scotland, in Wales, in all the different regions of England, um, because there's been so much interest in them. Um, you know, Catherine is a, a young woman with an immense sense of style that comes across very clearly exactly. from all the camera footage that we've seen Absolutely. and I think there's as much interest in the UK in what dress she's going to wear on the day as there is here in the United States that's great that's great uh, and, and I wanted to know more details about the couple of course but uh, there is some uh, speculation about uh, 
the benefits, uh, whether they are uh, financial benefits or some of the expenses also, I know that there will be around 600,000 additional tours that they will be in London just for the royal wedding. I imagine this is a great benefit for the economy of the United Kingdom, is that correct? I think there really is. I, in fact, I know um, individuals from Georgia who are traveling to London, especially to catch a glimpse of the royal couple during the processions on the street. Um, and it will bring additional tourism to Britain. Um, of course, you know, there are expenses related to any major public event, but that's something that London itself is really pretty well primed for. And of course, the Royal Wedding is, is the beginning of a very exciting period for us with a number of really big world stage events. Next year, we'll be celebrating the Queen's Diamond Jubilee. That's her 60 years on the throne and um, that will make her the second um, longest reigning monarch that the UK's had, the, um, the longest being Queen Victoria. Right, right. And then shortly after that, we'll, have the, um, we'll be hosting the Olympics and the Paralympics, and that, again, will bring us to the centre of the world stage. So costs associated with the royal wedding uh, on the 29th of April, um, I think will sort of just blend in um, it's something that um, Britain's rather good at, um, all the sort of traditions that we enjoy. Right, yeah, it seems like this will be the beginning of a great time to celebrate in the United Kingdom. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful for your country, I'm very happy for that. Um, I, I know that the security is, is a subject that is uh, something that is a great concern, um, it, but you have prepared a, a, an amazing way. I, I understand there will be around 5,000 Scotland Yard agents uh, in London the day of the wedding, is that right? I don't have any detailed information on that, but I know that every precaution will be taken to make sure that it's safe, not just for um, the royal couple and their guests, but also for all the many members of the public that will be in London on the day. And again, it's something that um, you know the London Metropolitan Police are pretty much on top of. Um, you know, they've had to deal with some very tough situations in the past. Um, we're very well prepared um, on such matters and. Uh, it's an area where you know we collaborate closely with other organisations, and I'm sure that they will ensure, make sure that it's a, a very enjoyable day. Right, right. Well, there is, and, and this is something that uh, I, I think it will be important to also address that there's been some controversy about the fact that the security is not sort of like a taken care by uh, the royal family. But I believe that will be the same thing that asking perhaps. Uh, uh, President Obama's daughters to take care of their own <laughs> security, <laughs> you know? So it is, what would you say to those radical groups that they are preparing to uh, have an organized uh, uh, sort of like a protest that day? I, I feel that there may be a message from you representing the government of the UK would be appropriate to, to people that they are trying perhaps to bring uh, something negative to something that could be so positive for the entire world, really. Mm. Well, certainly, I think the amount of interest in the royal wedding um, has partly been generated because we've all been through some really tough times through the economic recession, and people are, are very happy to be celebrating a really positive event. And uh, so, I don't think um, you know that the idea of demonstrating and so on is at all in keeping with the general public spirit about the event. I think people are just there because you know they want to be um, you know to be part of a really fantastic. Um, possibly you know, um, you know, just a very special event. And it's, it's special obviously not just for the young couple concerned, but you know, this is a, a future King of England. And so that's important for us as a nation as a whole. And of course, um, a potential head of state for other Commonwealth countries too. Absolutely. And, and, and there's something to be remembered um, at this time. I, I think of um, Lady Diane, um, uh, Prince uh, Diane is somebody that is going to be in the mind of many that day. Of course, Prince William uh, mm. and, and the rest of the royal family, I imagine. But the, the entire world will be remembering uh, the time of when she was around and she has been so loved by many around the world. Uh, do you have any kind of information if there's going to be any kind of uh, sort of like uh, uh, reminding of the queen uh, or, or the prince at that time? Mm. Well, certainly, um, Princess Diana um, brought up her two sons um, to have their eyes open to the special privileges that they enjoyed, but also what life was like for other people in much 
um, more difficult circumstances. And um, Prince William has demonstrated you know, how much he's aware of, um, of people and the difficulties that they face in their everyday life. Um, and he seems to um, you know, share views with Catherine Middleton on that. For example, they've chosen um, to ask their guests at, um, at the wedding to give gifts to charity as opposed to giving gifts to them as a royal couple, which I think is a wonderful gesture. Yes. Um, but beyond that, um, I'm sure that um, you know, Princess Diana will be there um, in everybody's hearts. And of course, Catherine Middleton will be carrying the engagement ring, Princess oh. Diana's engagement ring. And I think that was a huge symbol of um, how important she is to Prince William and the royal family. Oh, absolutely. And I saw the interview on YouTube, actually, where uh, Prince William says, oh, she will be in trouble if she loses this <laughs> wedding. I thought that was, <laughs> that was great that he, he made that comment. Um, talking about YouTube, I think it's amazing that we will be able to see uh, the, the wedding, uh, not only on, on television, CNN will be transmitting this live, but also you too will be able to transmit this live. Um, um, please tell us why do you think the royal family decided to transmit this or broadcast uh, this around the world without charging any money for it? Mm -hmm. th I think that's a great gesture. It is a wonderful gesture, and I, I guess it, it is, um, you know, it just demonstrates their recognition for, um, you know, the sort of the wide audience that they know are very interested in what's happening. Um, They've, they've really made every effort to be open as much as possible on all the arrangements. They've, they launched a special official royal wedding website, uh, which provides additional information about the preparations for the wedding, which is really quite fascinating to see. And uh, they've got um, you know, Twitter and Facebook, um, just like any modern person would have, right. just to share information about the wedding. So they, they've clearly got... Um, a really good understanding of the level of interest. That is that is amazing. You know, I, I, I certainly will be right there watching mm. it, uh, whether it's CNN or YouTube. How many people do you expect that, that it will be watching? Do you have any numbers? The government of the UK has any numbers on how many people will be actually viewing this, or, or you know, just any sort of like amounts of that you can give us, whether it's uh, the, the kind of profit that uh, it will be coming from this event. Or, or anything that you can disclose to us the, and the viewers that we would <laughs> like to know about? <laughs> well, um, I know I've heard it s said that there could be as many as 2 billion viewers um, you know, through the media on the day, uh, which is an enormous number of people. Amazing, yeah. Of course, um, they have chosen really quite an intimate setting for the wedding itself, and I believe there are just 1,600 guests actually in Westminster Abbey for the ceremony. So that's that's quite small, and if, uh, there'll be hundreds of thousands of people on the streets of London um, who will, you know, be out cheering for them. And as they come out of Westminster Abbey, they'll be in a horse-drawn stage um, state coach, uh, which will make them feel very accessible to those that are in the crowds. But all around um, the UK, our style of celebration will probably be street parties. You know, people having private, privately organised street parties, so they can celebrate with their neighbours, and um, you know, some of them may be able to arrange a TV or something to watch uh, the ceremonies as well. Um, so I don't know how anybody estimates the number of people that watch. Um, and <laughs> I, I, it's hard, it's hard no, to I, th I think it's impossible to tell. <laughs> right, right. Well, talking about the guests, you mentioned the guests, and I know that there is uh, a lot of speculation that regards who is coming and, and, and who is not, but. I understand that they have disclosed part of the list of the guests, and there's a lot of ambassadors that they are based in the UK, um, and, and of course the celebrities like Elton John and so on. Can you share with us of anybody that we don't know yet that it will be there that you have found out through the government? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not in on that level of secrecy, I'm afraid. <laughs> okay, just <laughs> wondering. <laughs> this is something that I guess it's very personal to um, to the royal couple and the royal family, and yes, there will be. Uh, state representatives, uh, official guests, but I think um, you know quite a portion of the guest list 
will actually be personal friends of the royal couple, including um, colleagues, people that Prince William works with. He works for um, the Royal Air Force in search and rescue, and so some of his colleagues from his search and rescue team, I think I'm pretty sure will be there, uh, as well as other contacts that they've had, perhaps through university or others. And you know, there'll be charity workers, um, faith leaders, uh, people from all sections of society will be at the wedding itself. That's amazing. That's amazing. I, I have to tell you, uh, I have such a high regards for the Prince for, for many, many years because of uh, I'm originally from Chile, and I knew that Prince William had come to Chile many years ago to do volunteer work, mm -hmm. and he had been in a very remote area of Chile that n nobody really knows. Not even Chileans go to this area in the south of Chile, and. Um, just a small amount of uh, population in this town, and he spent time there. Uh, and, and they will show him, uh, you know, I saw this show on TV where he was cleaning bathrooms and, you know, just doing a, mm -hmm. a very average work for any young student that want to do some volunteer work. Um, and, and I have great respect for that. So, how do you view that the work that now he will be doing? with uh, his wife, would she be able to adjust it? You know, I don't know how prepared she is for this type of work that he has to do, you know, just representing the UK all over the world. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, um, at least initially, um, Prince William will be continuing with his job as at the moment as an RAF um, helicopter pilot. And, uh, but they even then, as a couple, I'm sure will undertake sort of public tours of duty and, uh, so far they, they've already undertaken that in the run-up to the wedding and they've um, both together visited uh, hospitals, um, you know, community centres, um, other types of organisations around Britain, um, getting to greet the crowds and every indication is they are absolutely on top of that type of role, uh, very much loved by all that have met them. Well, that's, that's wonderful. I, I remember when um, Prince Diane had to go through the same kind of uh, uh, sort of adjusting to a public life, mm. and it was very hard for her. I remember that at the beginning, you know, there was some sort of difficult time and maybe a little bit stressful for her. I get the feeling that Kate has a complete uh, more relaxed uh, sort of uh, um, attitude about it. Would you agree with that? Do you think she's more at ease with all the responsibilities that they're coming up to her? Mm. Well, of course, Princess Diana was much younger when she married Prince Charles. I think she perhaps was 19 years old. And um, both Prince William and Catherine Middleton are around the same age, the late, late 20s. Right. So those years make quite a big difference. And um, Catherine Middleton's, you know, obviously, it seems to me, a very poised young woman. Yes. And um, I, I fully expect that um, although the nature of the job is itself very stressful, they both seem to um, support each other very well in the type of public duties that they have. That is excellent, that is excellent. Um, and, and, and of course there are details about the wedding that I know like especially young uh, girls and, and, and the younger population that they're very interested in knowing. They, they talked about uh, he, uh, uh, Prince William uh, proposed in Africa and, um, and, and it was a very meaningful uh, uh, sort of location for them that inspired him to, to, you know, to be the, the time and the right moment to do so. Do you have any information and why would he have chosen Africa specifically? And, and you know, there's, what is the, there is any other meaning that we don't know about that maybe you can share with us about Africa specifically? Why would that be the location? Well, I know that Prince William has, um, you know, travelled to Africa on a number of occasions and has done voluntary work also in Africa. Um, it's clearly a place that he cares a lot about, and of course, it's a most beautiful continent, um, absolutely fascinating. And um, I think he proposed whilst they were on holiday, and no doubt it was a you know wonderful location to choose for that. I don't have any inside information on okay. it, <laughs> but to me it sounds like um, a very romantic place to choose very um, much so. for any person. Right, mm. right. And and there there was little details that perhaps you don't know about, but I I will ask just in case because mm -hmm. I'm sure the viewers will be interested in knowing. I know that he had mentioned that he will not be wearing uh, the the wedding uh, band. 
I guess it's something particular that he prefers the, the not to do. Do you know anything? <laughs> Solange, you know more about that than I do. Um, I don't know whether, you know, in, in it may be part of his um, his career responsibilities. There may be some risks involved in, in wearing a band, um, you know, the nature of the work that he does. But um, I don't know the answer to that. Okay, okay. <laughs> and, and I'm sorry I had to ask this. I know that this is something that, you know, many people are talking about. Mm. Well... In that regard, in some of these sort of like uh, details about the wedding, um, but now coming back to the consulate here, what has been the reaction that you have seen as the consul general of the UK here in the southeast? What is the feedback that you get from Americans towards the consulate and t towards the, the real wedding? Mm -hmm. Have you received any kind of specific feedback? Well, I guess the most asked question that I have as I've been traveling around the Southeast is, have I got an invitation <laughs> and <laughs> will I be in London for the 29th of April? And um, I have to say that I, I'm, I won't be, but I've got a very good reason not to be. Uh, it's actually a national holiday for the UK. It's right. been proclaimed, uh, proclaimed as a special national holiday in honor of the Royal Wedding. Um, but the, the strength of interest here was so great that I asked my team would they be prepared to work on the day in order to host a special event here, and they unanimously um, wanted to do that. So oh. we're, we're hosting a very special event here in Atlanta with guests from across the southeast to celebrate the day. That is wonderful, and I'll ask you many more details about that event that I know is going to be amazing event and I know the World Chamber of Commerce is supporting the consulate just because of such a um, high level of guests and, and, and you know the, the amazing event that you're putting together. Um, I will ask you more about it. Um, what would you be, what would it be your message to uh, the, uh, the community here regarding uh, the, the consulate and the you know, the royal wedding, do, do you have a specific message to the community that you can transmit on behalf of the United Kingdom? Mm -hmm. Well, I hope as many people as possible will enjoy celebrating the day, um, you know, relish the opportunity to feel good for a very happy young couple um, and, um, you know, look to it as a, a beacon for, you know, future success and happiness not just for the young couple, but all the people that are engaging in the event and enjoying the moment with them. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your, um, your candid response and uh, we will be right back. <laughs> It's wonderful that you have told us uh, uh, the consulate would like to actually work during the day that uh, the United Kingdom would be celebrating and having a holiday. And for what I understand, it's going to be a long holiday. Many people will take almost a week off because then you have another holiday coming up after that. Is that right? That's right. We regularly do have a public holiday on the Monday um, at, at this time of year. So by having, uh, we've got a long weekend and of course people can take a few extra days to make a, a really good long holiday of it. <laughs> well, that is amazing. The consulate is gonna be working here just based on the United States. Please tell us more about the consulate. What is uh, some of the initiatives that you're doing besides working on the event for the Royal Wedding? Well, we get involved in all sorts of things. Of course, we provide um, consular support to British nationals that need assistance. But a lot of what we do um, can vary from education links to science, research and innovation links. And of course, um, many different types of cultural events. Very recently, um, I co-hosted a special event for the St. John's Choir from, sorry, the St. John's College Choir from the University of Cambridge and they did a spectacular concert at St. Philip's Cathedral here in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. um, but we do all sorts of cultural activities, but perhaps first and foremost is the work we do on trade and investment. And um, we do have a very large relationship on that side here in Georgia. Please tell us about how a company, a local company that will be interested in doing international trade with the uh, UK can go about uh, and, and perhaps contact the consulate or, or perhaps a, a trade office that you may have here and, and, um, and perhaps uh, obtain some leads, some 
uh, business information regarding the UK. Mm. Well, any company that's interested in the UK could contact us and we can let them know about um, what the sector that they're interested in looks like in the UK, perhaps some of the special events they might want to target for a visit and provide specific you know, details information uh, which could be of use to them in, in terms of their decision making. So they could co um, contact the British Consulate Atlanta. Okay. Um, now for companies that they are coming from the UK to perhaps uh, open a branch here in Georgia, how can a local company, whether it's a relocation company or, or perhaps legal or marketing, can approach the consulate to become one of the preferred uh, vendors per se for uh, for this UK companies that they will do business here. Do, do you all have a system that uh, this local companies can can approach you and just get their information there? Um, our approach is to make sure that any British companies coming this way have access to the community here, and we have um, a number of um, opportunities to do that. Um, it's worth knowing that um, there's a huge amount of British investment in the United States. We are each each other's biggest investors, and so British investment accounts for something like a million jobs in the United States. And just in Georgia, British investment is responsible for something like 24,000 or more jobs. Um, so there are, there's, there's a strong community of British businesses already operating here that can help to find the way for other British businesses. And there's a very strong British American business group, which, and it's that networking group that's perhaps most productive in forming the kind of professional relationships that you're talking about. So we make sure people get to know them quickly. That is excellent. That is excellent, and I'm sure many business will really uh, uh, enjoy knowing this information so they can benefit from it. Please provide a final thought to American viewers regarding uh, the United Kingdom, the consulate, and, and of course the wedding, the royal wedding. Mm -hmm. Well, we're working hard to make sure that Britain is the very best place in the world to do business. And we would love to tell people um, more about that. Um, so please contact us to the British Consulate and perhaps use the wedding as an opportunity to get to know us a little better. Come and celebrate with us uh, or go to visit London and um, just make sure you're, you're up to date with um, modern Britain. That is great. Please give us your contact information that we will provide uh, uh, in uh, one of the breaks as well. Mm -hmm. But give us a, a web page or a contact number that they can reach out to you. There's an easy place to look. It's UK in USA Atlanta. If people put that in their search engine, um, my office will pop up in front of them. That's great. Well, thank you so much for being here today. I have enjoyed tremendously having you as a guest. And hopefully you will come back and provide more information after the wedding. Thank you very much, Solange. I've enjoyed it immensely. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much.